this video, I'm going to show you how to create a schedule with custom parameters. So here I have a little house and we're going to use the windows as our example. So we want to create a window schedule with certain data. So step number one, I'm going to either go to the view tab of the ribbon and go to the schedule quantities button, or a second option would be in project browser. I go to schedules, right click, new schedule quantities. From here, I can choose a category. So I'm gonna be scheduling windows. Here's the window category. It's just gonna be called a window schedule unless I change that. And it's gonna come, the data is gonna come from the building components and they're all new construction. So here we get to decide which fields are going to be part of our schedule. So I'm going to start with type mark. Each window will have a unique number to identify it, and that is the type mark. So I use a screen arrow to add that field to my schedule. Then I'm going to pick up the window width, add that the window height, the head height, the manufacturer, the cost, and the one parameter that I do not have that I would like to add is the window material. So let me actually create what we have here first, and then I'll come back and show you how to create a custom parameter for material. So these are the parameters I have so far. In the filter tab, you can choose to only show windows of a certain width or height or head height. Um, so if you did choose something like this, you want only windows of a certain width. You can say widths that are equal to greater than or less than. And then in this list, you have the actual widths that are available in your project. So I'm not going to be using a filter. On the sorting and grouping tab, this is how it's going to organize your data. So I want to organize in order of type mark. And I'll have that type mark value be ascending from smallest to largest. And I'm going to itemize every instance. So I want every single window to have its own line of data. Then we have formatting. So I usually on the left side, click the first field, hold shift and click the last field. This will highlight all of them. I want all of my text to be horizontal, centered in the cell. Uh, usually that's all I do in this one. And then on appearance, this is how the line work looks. Do you want to show titles? Do you want to show headers? What type of text do you want to show? Uh, so I'm going to keep all this for now and click OK. So here we get to see what that table is going to look like. So we have our type marks in order, width, height, head height. Manufacturer is something that is not a part of the family initially. So we have to assign a manufacturer. So I'm just gonna make this up. I'm gonna call it uh, Brian Windows. <laughs> right. So if you type in a manufacturer, it's gonna ask you, do you want all double hung 36 by 48 windows to use Brian Windows? You can say yes or no, right? So I'll say, okay. So all of these are the same type of windows. And then down here, maybe this is a different brand, different manufacturer. I can put in Jeffrey windows. I'll get that same message. I can say, okay. And now we have two left. When you click on this cell, instead of typing something new, you could use the drop down and pick from your list. So maybe these are also Jeffrey windows. I'll say okay. 
this one, Jeffrey Windows. Okay. And so now I've filled out the manufacturer. Right. And so the cost is, again, something that's not included with the family, but you can assign. So let's say all of these windows are just making this up. Um, $200 each, right? So I'm going to say, okay. All right. So those are all $200 each. Um, this one is the same size, but of different brand. Maybe this one is $250. And this one's a little bit smaller. I'll say 150. And this one, I'll go again with um, 250. Okay, so I was able to fill out all the data so far. The one column that is not included right now is the material column. So if I wanted to add the material column, let's go back to the properties window. Um, under other, these four things will get you to the same window. They're just different tabs in the schedule window. So the fields are where we were able to add these columns. So I'm gonna go click edit. You'll see that there it's all the same window. It's just the fields tab. And in this list, material is not included. It's alphabetical. So if you go to the letter M, you don't see material, right? So there is a button right here to add a new parameter. And the parameters are tied to the family, the window family. So I'm gonna try using add new parameter. Okay, so if you use a project parameter, it's only gonna be for this project. If you use a shared parameter, this will be stored in an external I believe text file, and then you can grab from that list of parameters in the future for other projects. So I'm gonna go with the shared parameter and I'll click select. And it tells me I don't have a shared parameter file specified. Do I want to choose one? I'll say yes. And so from here, if I have a shared parameter file already started for my project, for my company, I can browse to that file. But if I don't, I can create one. So I'm gonna create. And so here it is creating a text file. I would put it somewhere where you can always find it or if you're sharing it with the company, everyone can find it. Uh, for this lesson, I will just put it on my desktop I'll call it Revit shared parameter file. Okay, then I'll click save. So whatever I create in here will be saved in this file. And in the future, I can always go and select from this file. All right, so first thing we need to do is create a group. All right, so I'll click new. For the group name, I'm going to use material, right? So maybe I'll just call it material. You could put it under something else like general, generic, other, whatever you want to do. Um, I'll just call it material. So here's the group. You can put multiple parameters under that group. So under the material group, I'm going to make a new parameter. And this new parameter is material. Maybe I'll be more specific, window material. Or even, you know, windows are glass, but maybe window frame material. There we go. Um, and so you get to choose if it goes to a specific discipline or if it goes to common, right? So typically windows are under architectural, but there is no architectural discipline here. So I'll stick to common. This type of data, you have some options. It can be an integer, an angle, an area, a length, a distance, all these things here. So I'm going to be typing it out. I'm going to say it's text. And I'll click OK. So here's that new parameter that I want to add to my schedule. I'm going to click OK. Here it is. I'm still selecting it. OK. 
And so it's grayed out here because it was selected from the file. You can't change it here if it's coming from the file. Okay, so it, it knows that it's called window frame material. The discipline is common. The data type is text. And then you can group it. So this group is the group for properties. When you select the window, um, the actual window element in your model, and you go to properties of that window element, you'll see groups, right? So this schedule has identity data, phasing, IFC parameters, other. So that window will also have grouping of the data. So what group do you want this data to go under? So it's material. I'm just gonna put it under other, but you can always choose where you wanna put it. So I'll put it under other. And down here you have option, add to all elements in the category. So that would be all the windows. The window is the category. Do you want all windows to have this material parameter? I would say yes, that, that's a good thing to do. Once you say add it to all elements in the category, do you want each window to be, <clears throat> excuse me, to have its own material option? Or do you want all the windows that are the same type to have the same material? So typically I would say when you order these windows, they're the same type would be the same material. So I'm gonna go by, by type, not instance. Instance is every single window can have a different material. Um, so I'm gonna say all windows of the same type will have the same material. Click okay. And so because I just created it, it added it to this schedule. Um, but if you didn't want it here, you could use this red arrow to get rid of it. It goes back into this list. If you do want it from here, you can add it, right? So I do want to add that. Um, then I'll click OK. And so it has added this new column of data for me. Let's see if I can stretch it a little bit. What I'm going to do is add the material here. And then I'm going to show you in the model where you can find that material. So let's say the first few are going to be aluminum frame. So all the double hung 36 by 48 will be aluminum. And then let's say that the next few are going to be a vinyl frame. So all the double hung 24 by 48 will be vinyl. And let's make the rest vinyl. So using the drop down to choose vinyl. Okay, so we got this column of information to show up correctly. I wanna now show you how this window frame material is also tied to the model elements. Let me save this real quick. So I'm gonna go into the 3D view. And I'm gonna take a look at one of the windows. So if I click on this window here, and I look at the properties of this double hung 36 by 48, under other, we only see the head height because what we're looking at in this properties window is the properties per instance. Right, so each window can have a different head height. And so we can change the head height in properties. Where I stored this information was in the type properties. All windows of the same type have the same material. So instead of just looking at the properties window, I'm gonna click edit type. In this type properties, if we scroll down under other, window frame material is right there, right? So it's tied to the model element. You can always change it through type properties or the schedule. CAD Masters offers online and classroom training for a variety of Autodesk software. For more information, go to www.cadmasters.com or give us a call at 925-939 one three seven eight.